Hi, in this video, we're going to create a program in assembly language, compile it into object code, and then load it into memory and run it using only basic and our copy of the Commodore 64 programmer's reference guide. This will be a very quick, but I think pretty interesting project. So let's get started. An interesting thing about the 6502 processor is each instruction that it processes is either one byte, two bytes, or three bytes. So on a single line of basic, we can represent an instruction and the parameters that need to be passed into it. So let's start writing our code. I'm gonna remove these zeros now because now we know how much space we need to backfill these in later. So the first thing we're going to do is take the X register and decrease it by one. I could also increase it. It really doesn't matter. I could also use other registers, but I like the letter X. It's fun. Um, we're not even going to initialize it because we're going to be cycling through this so fast. It's just going to loop over and over again. This line of code is going to store the X register in memory just D020. In decimal, that's 53 to 80, and anything you store in that memory location changes the border color to that color. This is going to make a call to a subroutine in a Commodore 64 kernel. It's going to scan the keyboard to see if anyone pressed anything. If they do press something, it puts that key value into the accumulator. If, they've, if there's nothing there, we get a zero in the accumulator. This line of code is going to compare the accumulator with the value 0. If there's a 0 there, we're going to branch up to the first line of code, that DEX. And this last line of code, we're going to return from subroutine, and this will return control back to basic. And lastly, this negative one, which is not really a part of the program, but when we write our basic loader in a few moments, that's gonna to signal to the loader to stop looking for data to load into memory. All right, now let's assemble this. So the first mnemonic is DEX, decrement index X by one. This table shows us one row per addressing mode of how we would assemble this. Well, there's only one option for DEX, it's implied mode, and it's only one byte long. Implied means it's just gonna do what it does, it's implied what it does. So we need to convert that value in the opcode column to decimal for Commodore BASIC. So it's a CA. We're going to use our handy dandy Windows 11 calculator to perform this function. So you do is you put it in programmer mode. We're going to click on hex and we're going to type in CA. And we're going to take this value of 202. Okay, the next instruction we're going to deal with is STX. STX stores the index X into memory. This one has three addressing modes. We're going to worry about the one that's called absolute. Don't worry about zero page for now. If you know what that is, that's OK, another time. But absolute is three bytes, right? One byte for the operand and two bytes for the memory address. Let's start with the opcode. The opcode is 8E. That gives us a 142. OK, now we have, we have two bytes in this memory address, D0 and 2.0. So let's start with D0. 208 and then we're going to look at the number 20 because it's 32. Now we read addresses as D020 but the Commodore 6502 reads it in backwards order or little ending order so we need to put the 208 after the 32. Excellent. Now we're going to do something very similar with JSR. So JSR is jump to new location, saving the return address. It only has one uh, addressing mode, uh, which is absolute, and just like STX, where it's a memory address. And the opcode is 20. So let's convert that. Oh, there we go. 32. I know FF is 255. And then E4. And again, we need to flip these around to put it in little ending order. OK, 
Okay, the next mnemonic is CMP. And as you can see, this compares the memory and accumulator. This one has a whole stack of addressing modes. But what we care about is that first one, immediate, it's two bytes long. So all we need is the opcode and the zero that's right next to it. So let's start with C9. That's 201 and zero. Pretty straightforward. Now the next one's a bit tricky. This one's called branch on result zero, and the addressing mode is relative. Let's first do the easy part. That opcode is F0. Now let's talk about the addressing mode. This is using relative addressing mode. What does that mean? Let me put a placeholder zero here for a moment. Relative addressing mode means we have to give it a one byte value. So that's zero to 255. Uh, in, in one of two directions, forwards or backwards in memory. So the number of memory addresses forward or the number of memory addresses backwards. Well, we only have one byte. Uh, so the byte is actually split in half, okay? Zero through 127 are positive numbers and 128 through 255 are negative numbers. So first we need to count how many bytes backwards we need to travel to get to DEX. And you include both values that are in this opcode. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So to get the value of 11, we're going to print 256 minus 11. That gives us 245. And that means negative 11. Cool. Now let's get the real easy one, RTS. RTS, return from subroutine is also only has one addressing mode implied. So all we need to do is convert that opcode of 60 to decimal. It's 96. Okay, we've keyed in our assembler. Now we need to write a piece of code that's gonna load those data statements into memory. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna make a variable called PC. That's going to stand for program counter. We're going to make a variable X because we're going to start at 49152. We're going to read all these data statements and we're going to poke it into memory. When we read a negative one, we're just going to end our program. Let's save it before we run it. And let's take one final look at what we have. So the program is going to start at 49152. It's going to read each byte into memory. It's going to poke it into memory. And then our code should be ready to roll. So let's run this. It runs really quick. Looks like nothing happened. So now let's call 49152 and see what happens. There's our crazy colors, so that's clearly working. And that's, if you look in the basic lines of code, that's the code between 10 and 50. And then we press a key. This is the code um, from FFE4. It's no longer zero, it returns, and here we are. Now what's kind of neat about this particular source code is it's relocatable. We can kind of load it anywhere. So let's load it into another place like 32768. And it still works. Pretty neat. Cool. Now we can kind of put this anywhere in RAM and run it. Let's put it somewhere really crazy. Let's put it at 1024. What's 1024? 1024 is the screen. If I poke values here, you could see it appear on the screen, right? Well, what if we put our code there? You get some garbage on the screen and I can run it. That garbage is the code. So you can put machine language code kind of anywhere as long as it remains untouched while it's running. And if I remove this code, this will now crash because that code is no longer valid. So that's pretty much it. I thought it was kind of a neat little trick, uh, a nice fun project to work on. So thank you very much for watching this video. I had fun putting it together. Take care.